Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Raj Shekhawat. I'm a clinical audiologist by training. In the past decade and a half, I have worked in countries like India, United States of America, Singapore, New Zealand, England, and very soon Australia. Based on my experience working in schools, clinics, hospitals, universities, private practice, there's one thing I have noticed worldwide, and that is people tend to underestimate the significance of hearing. Hearing impairment is invisible in nature. Unlike visual impairment or person with physical impairment, if there are two people standing and one of them has hearing loss, there's absolutely no way purely by looking at them we can predict who has hearing impairment. The very fact that I'm talking to you the very fact that I can speak in five different languages is purely because of my hearing. When a child is born, based on their hearing ability, they hear a lot. And based on that, they learn to speak and they learn a language. Not only speech and language development, all the other spheres of our lives are also dependent on our hearing. The moment we get up from the bed using an alarm, hearing dependent. We get up and we go to work, our commute, hearing dependent. Our, our work life, interacting with colleagues, hearing dependent. Education, attending lectures, interacting with peers, hearing dependent. Entertainment, watching movies and watching TV and listening to music, hearing dependent. Hearing is extremely, extremely important. And everything around us depends on hearing. In fact, hearing can heighten our emotional encounters too. Let me share this very recent encounter of mine with you all. One of the most strongest emotions I have ever experienced in my life was tears of joy. As they say in Hindi, khushi ke asu. Two months back, precisely on 30th of June, 9.30 night, my wife went into labor. We rushed to the hospital and after intensive 12 hours of labor, 9.29 in the morning on 1st of July, our son George Yashraj was born. I can very vividly remember his head crowning, then his beautiful face coming and then the whole body. And then he cried. Oh boy, tears went rolling down my cheeks. It's so amazing that a cry of a newborn is capable of evoking such strong emotions in us. However, when I put my audiologist hat on, I can probably understand why that happens to us. Basically, the auditory area and the emotional area in our brain the part of our brain which processes sounds and the part of the brain which processes emotions are linked together. And that is why when we hear a nice, soothing favorite song of ours, we instantly feel relaxed and calm. Contrary to that, if we hear a sound of an ambulance or a police siren, it evokes distressing feelings. That's because the emotions and hearing they are connected to each other. To understand this, let's do an activity together. I want you all to close your eyes. Go ahead, close your eyes with me. Now, I want you to think about the most exciting day of your life till today. Relive that day in your mind. Go through that day. That could be your day of your wedding, the day your child was born, you won some award, you got some good news, or your time with your loved one. Just keep replaying that moment, that day, those conversations in your mind. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, I want you to keep your eyes closed, but this time you are again replaying that very same incident, 
but there's a catch. And the catch is, this time, you can't hear anything at all. You can't hear any conversations, any sounds. Let it sink in. Go back, replay that day, but this time, you can't hear a thing. What do you think? Do you think your day was as exciting as it was when you could hear everything? I would leave you to answer that question to yourself. That signifies the importance of hearing in our lives. Let's talk about our magical hearing. Hearing is one of the first sensory organs to develop. In fact, during the very first trimester of pregnancy, hearing starts developing. By the time the little baby is 16 weeks old in the mother's womb, the baby can detect the sound. And by the time the baby is 24 weeks old, the baby can sort of start turning their heads towards the source of the sound. Sound is everywhere in the environment. When a sound is created, there are vibrations which are created. There are sound waves which are created in the environment. And when those sound waves travel towards our head, this part here, we call it pinna. The purpose of this part is to filter, to act as a funnel, to receive the sounds and then direct the sounds to our ear canal. When sound waves pass through the ear canal, they reach our eardrum and they impinge on the eardrum. As a result of that, the eardrum vibrates. And there are three very tiny bones which are attached to a eardrum on one side, and on the other side, they're attached to this snail-shaped spiral structure called cochlea, which is filled with salty water. Now, that's the part where real magic happens. Almost on the size of our thumb, there are thousands of hair cells in the cochlea, which converts the vibration energy of sounds into electrical impulses. And then these electrical impulses are carried by a nerve, auditory nerve, all the way to human brain, where the sounds are processed. Let's understand the importance of these hair cells in a cochlea. Although they are magical and they do this very significant part of converting the sound impulses into electrical impulses, they are also very delicate and prone to damage. And once they are damaged, there's absolutely no way we could regenerate them in humans. So they are very, very precious. Let me show you something. These are various colorful pipe cleaners beautiful colorful ones. They represent our hair cells, okay? And my hand here, it represents the sound level or the sound waves. Now see carefully, the sound waves are coming and they hit the hair cells and the hair cells are processing those sounds and they're converting them into electrical impulses which then go to the brain, okay? When the sound level is mild to moderate, the hair cells are fine, they are dancing around, they look healthy, they look fine. However, imagine the sound levels are really, really loud. Let's see what happens then. Watch carefully. Loud sound level comes and goes like bang, 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 bang. See what has happened to our hair cells. Let's try and bring them back to where they were. Mm. No. Once damage, damage for good. Damage forever. This is extremely, extremely important. And us, on the name of entertainment, we expose ourselves to very, very loud noises and loud sounds. Let me give you an example. The other day I was traveling to work and I was taking a train to my work, going to central London. Few meters away, there was a lad, young lad, sitting with earphones in his ears and blasting the music. Me sitting few meters away could literally hear everything 
I could hear the song, I could hear the beats, I could hear the lyrics. When we are putting these earbuds or headphones and blasting the music, remember we are putting the noise source very very close to our eardrums and then putting our hair cells on risk. Research shows that the amount of noise level by which we can be exposed to and the safety duration for how long it's safe for us to be exposed to that duration. And that research shows that when the sound intensity is around 85 decibel, we could be safely exposed to that sound levels for eight hours. That sounds like a long time, isn't it? However, listen to this very carefully. Every time the sound intensity increases by just three decibel, the safety duration reduces to half. Which means if the sound intensity increases from 85 to 88 decibel, the safety duration reduces from eight hours to four hours. And if we do our maths, by the time the sound levels are 115 decibel, the safety duration of exposure is only 30 seconds. I want you to reflect on the times when we go to nightclubs and parties and functions and, and work, the noise levels around us, how loud are those? And is it safe for us to be exposed to those levels? Next time you're exposing yourself to loud noise, I would want you all to think about these hair cells. That's exactly what's gonna happen to our hair cells. So it's extremely, extremely important to be very careful and looking after our hearing. Unlike a child who is born with a permanent hearing loss, there's nothing much we can do as, as such. We can only identify that hearing loss as early as possible by doing a newborn hearing screening. That could happen on the day one the child is born and we can detect the hearing loss and that we can put a management plan in place ASAP. Contrary to that, the noise level which are there in our environment and if we get a hearing loss because of them, that's a purely acquired hearing loss. The hearing loss which can be 100% preventable. Research shows that there are 5.2 million people under the age of 19 years and there are 26 million people above the age of 19 years who develop hearing loss because of exposure to noise. Permanent hearing loss, which can be 100% preventable. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is I have created this very cool acronym called APP, A-P-P. -P, apps as in the apps which we use in day-to-day -day lives. Now, what does that app stands for? A stands for awareness and attitude. It's extremely, extremely important for all of us to be aware about the dangerous impact of noise and sounds on our hearing. There are a lot of people who are not even aware that unknowingly they are exposing themselves to dangerous levels of noise and it can lead to permanent hearing loss. So a talk like this is a tiny attempt to create that awareness. Once we have that awareness, there can be a positive shift in our attitude that we don't necessarily have to expose ourselves to very loud sounds on the name of entertainment. P. P stands for prevention. Now there are two things we can do in terms of prevention. First, reduce the level of sound if we can. For example, if we are listening through loud music through our headphones using our phone, we have absolute authority to reduce the loudness level, isn't it? Second, if we can't reduce the loudness, for example, if you've gone to a place where the music is playing and it's beyond our control, what we can then do is move away from the sound source. As we move away from the sound source, the intensity of sound by which we are exposing ourselves goes down. And that way, we can save our hearing. Third, and the most important thing, is protection. What do we mean by protection? I'm sure you must have seen all these music sensations like Sam Smith and Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande and Bruno Mars. Whenever they are doing live performances, they always wear musicians' plugs in their ears. 
And what those plugs do is they not only help them get a feedback on their singing, but they also help to attenuate or reduce the noise exposure and save their hearing. So it's extremely important for us as well that if we are going to a very loud concert or if you're going to a party which is going to be super duper loud, please make sure there are some measures in place to use hearing protections which can protect your hearing. I grew up listening to this beautiful story of Aladdin. Aladdin, the magical lamp, the genie. We all know that that magical lamp, you rub it, a genie will appear and then the genie will fulfill three wishes. Exactly the same way, we all have a magical lamp with us and that magical lamp is our hearing system. If we rub it in a wrong way, the genie will die. And once the genie will die, all the magic of hearing the fact that we can hear birds chirping, the fact that we can hear rustling of leaves, we can hear the voices of our loved ones, we can hear our newborn baby cry, which will evoke tears of joy. All that magic around us will disappear in no time. So it's extremely important to save our hearing. So please be aware, protect and prevent noise-induced hearing loss, don't let the genie die. Don't let the magic of hearing disappear from your lives. Thank you so much.